what yes. do you think it was that made you initially resistant to to believing that this might be the case? It's just too shy. I mean, I think it's interesting for your. I think about thinking about your work. You talk in your some of your earlier work was about kind of finding yourself uh, disoriented or thrown into a sense of chaos after the after these foundational things you were the, the, th the things you had counted on or believed in. And I still had that around some sense of the medical system. I still had some confidence in the medical system before really getting into this. And I think that was part of what was uh, a barrier. I mean, I, I read Abigail Schreier's book twice. I spoke to her on the phone multiple times. I think she grew a little frustrated with me because I think there was a sense among some gender critical folks of like, where are the men? I don't mean, I mean, I don't want to overly gender it, but there was a sense in which it's disproportionately women that have been raising the alarm about this. You're one of the, you know, you and some of the other folks at Daily Wire are the exception, I think. But she, I think she was a little annoyed with me, which is like, why is it taking so long? Um, we did publish a few articles on it, then we got the WPATH files, but there's that sense of like, you know, look, if this is really what it appears to be, and now we have the evidence overwhelming that it is, in the WPATH files, you have everything you need to know that this is just as awful as it appears to be. If that's true, then you cannot trust the American Medical Association, the Endocrine Society, you cannot trust the health insurance companies, you cannot trust the hospitals, you cannot trust the doctors. It means that the, this, the fancy word for this, of course, is iatrogenesis. That's the when, the when the medical system makes people sick. It's an old phenomenon. There's a, a wonderful fourth, book fourth about it. Fourth leading cause of death. Fourth leading right. cause of death. And yeah. that was before, that was before, that was when it was functioning. Right, we have yes. no idea what its contribution to death is now, especially in the aftermath right. of the vaccine compulsion. Right, we have no right. idea. We may never find out. You know, maybe yeah. we will, but but we might not. Yeah, it's really, it's re okay. So fine. So I mean, your, well, your part of it is also I want to be, I want to respect local knowledge, and so I know that the people that call themselves environment, I knew the people that were calling themselves environmental NGOs weren't really saving the environment. Like that was my life's work for twenty years. I then discovered the same thing on homelessness. These are not people that are trying to end homelessness. They're trying to enable addiction and prevent the proper medical care of, of people with psychiatric disorders and serious mental illness. You then get to this, and it's such a grotesque perversion of the promise of, of health care and a perversion, as you were saying before, of the lesbian, gay rights and bisexual movement. They're they're. They're literally destroying the bodies of people that if you left them alone, would almost most of them would grow up to be gay, lesbian, and bisexual. So you should see the gay rights movement be the first out there to express outrage. But of course, they've been they were the first to get co-opted by it. You know, the corruption of it, it starts, it starts with the people that would have been the first line of defense. If you had said there's going to be an effort to to completely undermine the 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 reproductive capacity and sexual function of gay, lesbian, and bisexual adolescents, you would have said, well, no, the lesbian, gay, bisexual movement would never allow that. No, no they just, they're part of it. It is the LGBT it. movement. They facilitated yeah. it. Yeah. 